Hi there, this is Zontoff from Repro Products. This is an Autodesk screencast for a recording for an end user request. Uh, the issue is he's searching for a steel profile in Revit, an H300 by 300 by 10 by 16, which is a SEA profile region, and he needs to know how to use it properly within the Autodesk library. Uh, also, if possible, to import the profile library in advanced steel into Revit. So from the purposes of the Revit standpoint, here I am in Autodesk Revit 2017. Uh, and so I'm in 2017 Revit. If I click New under Families and scroll down and look at, say, Structural Column, I'm not sure exactly what you're going to be using this particular one for. But we'll start with Structural Column. Hit Open. Creates a new family. And if we head over to the Family and Categories and Parameters, in here, there's a little window that says Section Shape. And if you click inside here, you can specify a shape that you want. So for this particular H300 by 300 by 10 by 16, the closest I could find is like an eye shape. And it's just a matter of trying to pick something that makes a lot of sense for what you're trying to do. You could tweak and adjust it after the fact. So let's just use this eye shape parallel flange. The reason we do this, I'm going to cancel this for a second is that when we look at the family types window, you're going to notice here it just has basic data of structural material and identity data content. However, if you go back to family categories and parameters and define that section shape and hit OK, now if we head back to the family types window, it's going to give you additional uh, family parameter information here and here. Uh, and you can input the values and depending on which ones that you have to work with, you can select and you may be able to adjust. Most of them are going to say built-in parameter. <clears throat> but in any event, at least that gives you an initial profile of parameters to work with. And then you can just start drawing and creating your content. Um, the other potential thing you might be able to do is go to component, click yes, and load in a component. And let's say we look at a detail item and look for metals. Uh, look for steel and look for a particular shape that you want to work with. Um, let's look at scrolling down and, and you'll have a whole bunch to work with. You just have to find the right one. So let's just say I use this one for now and hit open. You could pick the particular size that you need. Hit OK and whether you can or cannot uh, load it or not load it will dictate whether you can use it or not. In this instance can't use this particular family file because it's a detailed component. However, you should be able to go to component and just go straight to structural columns and go to like HD or just steel and pick something that makes sense. Uh, let's try that one. Pick a particular size and then you can place it. Now head over to a final level of detail so you can see what you're looking at. And in essence, you're really just nesting this family inside this new family to work with. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure at this point in regards to the advanced steel portion into Revit, but I do know that within uh, Revit 2017 itself, let's look at a structural uh, starting file here. And we had a little bit of structure. When you're working with connections, um, you can specify connections and the settings of it to use against um, steel members. So, for example, if I bring all of these in, and then I start to build my steel design, so let's I put in a column here, and I'll put in a beam over here, and look at it in 3D, you already have by default some shapes to work with that might help you <coughs> with your uh, H300 by 300 by 10 by 16. Uh, but the steel connections portion here gives you the ability to specify the type of connection you want. Um, let's take a look at what they give us. <clears throat> and let's put in a, a shear plate. Let's try that one. So we'll pick the two members that we need by holding the control key down. Hit enter. And let it try to build it. And if it can build it, it'll build it. If it can't, it'll put in a generic connection, and then you can modify the parameters to adjust the design, and eventually the object will get created.
So I hope this screencast video helps for your situation. Thanks.